everyone. Today we're going to be doing some chemical tests on carbonyl compounds, uh, specifically aldehydes and ketones. And the first test I'm going to do is to test if you have either an aldehyde or a ketone. So I'm going to add something called Brady's reagent to our unknown substances A, B and C and see what they are. Brady's reagent is 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine or 2,4-DMP in a mixture of methanol, there's our methanol, and dilute sulfuric acid. And that is our Brady's reagent. Now I'm going to add Brady's reagent to our three unknown compounds. I've also added some methanol as a solvent and some sulfuric acid to make the reaction happen quicker. The positive result that we're looking for is an orange precipitate. So that's what we're expecting if we have an aldehyde or a ketone. So there we go, in A, we've definitely got an aldehyde or a ketone, you can see the orange precipitate there. And also in B, we can see there is an orange precipitate. C has not formed a precipitate and so it's not an aldehyde or a ketone. In case you're wondering about the formation of the precipitate, this is what's going on. Here we have our carbonyl compound. Um, if this is an a hydrogen then it's going to be an aldehyde and if it's a hydrocarbon group then it's going to be a ketone. Um, here is our 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine and they're reacting together in a condensation reaction so water is being formed and here we have um, the precipitate and this is going to be something, whatever um, aldehyde or ketone you had, something 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone, so slightly different name. So if this was propanol, it would be propanol 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazone. And that is the precipitate that we have here. Now we know A and B are both either an aldehyde or a ketone, we want to work out which of the functional groups they actually have. And to do that we're going to react them with something called Pollen's reagent. First of all we're going to mix some silver nitrate with some sodium hydroxide there and that should have formed a brown precipitate which is silver oxide there you go, you can see that there then we need to add some ammonium hydroxide until that brown precipitate just about dissolves That is our Tollens reagent. Nice and clear now. Now we're going to add our Tollens reagent to A and B, and what we're looking for is if it's an aldehyde, then we're going to see a silver mirror effect. So we can see that A is reacted. That's not quite the silver mirror effect that we wanted, but it's definitely a reaction. And you can see there that B hasn't reacted, that's still clear. So B is our ketone, and A is our aldehyde. Here's one I made earlier, which went much better and you can see the silver mirror effect that we were looking for. Looking now at the formation of this precipitate, it's actually just silver. So here if you can see we have our aqueous silver ion and that's reduced to form our solid silver precipitate and that is reduced in our reaction with our aldehyde which is oxidised to give a carboxylic acid. Now carboxylic acids and ketones 
can't be oxidised, uh, so they test negatively because they can't reduce the silver to give the precipitate. So if you want to know exactly which aldehyde or which ketone you have, a good way to do that would be to test the melting point of the derivatives from our Brodie's test. Then we can use an imaginatively named Fisher-John's melting point apparatus to test the melting point of the derivative, which can be found on data tables. We're not testing the substances themselves, as their melting points are often too similar to be of much definitive use, unlike the melting points of their derivatives. Brodie's reagent. Hi, sir. Hello. I've forgotten to put something in there. I haven't rubbed this off the board. There. Mm. And blah, 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 blah. 